Starting from the next academic year, about 55,000 undergrads and diploma students from low- and middle-income households will receive higher government bursaries and pay less in school fees. Second Education Minister Indrani Raja earlier told us more about the government's plans. So the key thing, right, is you want to make sure that it's affordable and accessible. Um, for undergrads, for university bursaries, the quantum given is more than for polys in any event because of the, the, the nature of the cost. So the, the amount of bursaries were bigger to begin with. Mm -hmm. And then for universities, you can see that for the first few tiers, actually the increase that we gave was quite a bit. This was because the current bursaries, we felt, were not adequate. But when you look at the top tier, uh, we felt that the current bursary was actually adequate for that income group. So that's why there was no increase for that one. But for the other tiers, because we, we felt that the current bursary uh, didn't sort of uh, provide as much assistance as would be necessary for those groups, that's why we topped it up. Mm -hmm. What about the impact of the higher bursaries? I mean, do mm. you expect to see uh, more students from these uh, lower to middle income households actually applying? Yes. Um, so far from what we see, the take-up rate uh, for students from lower-income households is higher than for those from middle-income households. So we do expect that with the enhanced bursaries, it will encourage more from lower-income households to apply for, for university courses and for poly courses as well. Mm -hmm. So let's just talk about the uh, increase in bursaries. I mean, we're just wondering, is that going to be balanced by um, perhaps cuts um, in education spending elsewhere? Oh, okay. So if, if you're concerned that, oh, because we are, yeah. you know, we're going to have to spend 44 million in bursaries, yeah. does that mean we have to take away uh, 44 million from elsewhere? I think the answer is you, you can't quite approach it like that. You've got to look at it in the round. So, for example, uh, you, you will know that due to our falling cohort size, we've merged some schools, for example, we've merged some JCs, so you would have less costs there than in the past. So you've, you've, you've basically got to add up uh, everything. Well, the way we've sized it is that we, we should be able to ac accommodate the enhanced bursaries without any issue. Um, and whatever it is, this government's commitment is to make sure that for education, we will continue to make sure that nobody gets left behind mm -hmm. uh, and that we will provide for what is needed for our population. Mm. And then let's talk about um, adjustments to fees at other universities aside mm. from SIT and SUSS. Do you see that maybe, is that on the cards? <laughs> okay, no, it was the other way around. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the, the level of fees for the other universities, we thought that that was, was okay. Mm -hmm. um, but the two newer uni autonomous universities, that's SIT and SUSS, when they first started out, they had smaller uh, cohort sizes, which means that the cost per head is higher. But now, as they've been more established, they're having more students, which means that you can bring the costs down. And what we're trying to do is to make sure that their costs are in line with the other universities. Mm -hmm. All right, and just before I let you go, um, perhaps higher bursaries for postgrad students. Uh, any chance of that? <laughs> um, the number of postgrad students uh, are actually very small uh, compared to the number of undergrads. Uh, so in, in terms of need, uh, it is far less than those who take the undergrad courses. And for those who do postgrad, actually, uh, there are institutional uh, bursaries and grants available. So for postgrads, I think um, what's, what's available at the moment is, is sufficient for them.